and welcome once again to As The Real Turns, your place for all things movie and television. We've got another great show for you lined up today, but before we go anywhere, let's do our entertainment update. Take it away! This is Brooke Solomon for your entertainment update. Today's updates include two celebrity deaths, a show's end, and an upcoming film. Let's rip the band-aid off and get to two celebrity losses. TV has lost the lives of Jerry Springer and Len Goodman. Springer was known for being the second host of America's Got Talent, mayor of Cincinnati, Ohio, and for his talk show. And Len Goodman served as the head judge on both Strictly Come Dancing and its American counterpart, Dancing with the Stars. Goodman was 78 and Springer was 79. With all the trouble late night shows are going through right now, one has dodged a bullet in a couple ways. The Late Late Show has aired its final episode back in April. The show ran from 1995 to 2023 with four different main hosts. Many may know the latter two hosts, Craig Ferguson and James Corden. Each brought their own humor and trademarks to the show, and you can go back and check out all the iconic moments on CBS, Paramount Plus, and YouTube, of course. Look for the joy, because if you do, it's out there. And that's all this show has ever been about. All we've ever wanted is just be a, 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 little, a little bit of light and levity at the end of your day. Thank you for letting me do this. Thank you for letting me into your home every night. I've never taken for granted what an absolute privilege this has been. Finally, to tie in with today's show, Spider-Man is continuing to swing onto movie screens. Due to the major success of Into the Spider-Verse, the sequel Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse will be premiering in June. This time, incarnations of Miles Morales and Spider-Gwen will be meeting even more iterations of the famous webhead. These will include Spider-Man 2099, Spider-Bite, and the spectacular Spider-Man. Find out what else happens on June 2nd when the film comes out. Everyone keeps telling me how my story is supposed to go. Nah, I'm gonna do my own thing. All stations, stop Spider-Man. You, you know me? me? And then I looked at my uncle and... Uh, let me guess. He died. This has been Brooke Solomon for your entertainment update. Now back to you, Daniel. And thank you, Brooke Solomon. Yes, Brooke Solomon, a friend of mine from high school uh, who we did some films together. And we even got into the New Hampshire High School Short Film Festival, which was pretty awesome. So thank you, Brooke. Uh, very nice of you to do that. We've got another amazing show for you. And it is, I say amazing because we are talking about a superhero who has spanned many, many years, has had many in incarnations. You know him as the Webhead. You know him as Spidey. You know him as Spider-Man. Here comes the Spider-Man. Yes, Spider-Man, uh, a very popular superhero and one of my favorite Marvel heroes. Um, and we have some wonderful people to talk about it with. We have a, f a very f uh, favorite friend of the show here. <laughs> uh, we have my good friend Vince. Vince, welcome to the show. How's it going? And good we to be have, here. Yeah. <laughs> and we have someone who has been on entertainment updates, but now we finally have her in the studio. We have my good friend Angel. Angel, welcome to the show. Hello, hello. I'm happy to finally be here. I it's know. been a while. I'm I'm happy to actually make it in person. Exactly, exactly. So this is so awesome that you're both here and you both know about Spider-Man. So we're going to get some uh, talking about Spider-Man. And we're going to start all the way back in the 60s when he first uh, came onto TV screens in the 1967 Spider-Man cartoon. All right. And we have the, uh, the theme song playing here. And, you know, this was when it was like telling you it's in color, you know, color TVs were a thing and stuff like that. Um, this is also the show that introduced the famous song, The Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider yeah, and on, uh, so on and so forth. 
Um, now, this is like one of the first times we see him not in a comic book, uh, so his costume's a little different, and uh, it seems a little cheeky and cheesy at times, but uh, Vince, we'll start with you. Uh, have you seen the 1967 cartoon, and even if you haven't, what are your thoughts on it as we see the intro here? Um, yeah, no, so I, I've seen like episodes of it here and there, I need to go through and watch all of them, because they're, they're great, but, sure. um, you know, like you were saying, it's definitely, like, it's a little, like, campy at times, like, a little silly, but, you know, definitely a good, you know, first foray into, like, animation for it, like, you know, from the comics. Yeah. Definitely, you know, set up all the tropes, uh, you know, that we still see today. That's for sure, yeah. And Ms. Angelique, what do you think about, uh, our 1967 incarnation of the webhead? I think that the fact that the memes that have stayed from this all the way up until now just proves that it's great. <laughs> that it's fantastic. Yeah. And also at least memorable enough to, I think you literally just said it, it's something where it's constantly going to be used in further videos, further movies, further comics. Mm -hmm. What for? He hasn't done anything yet. Quick, Brutus, put him in. See? I told you! Now capture him! Which one? No, I don't care which one! Get them both! That man's an imposter. That man is the imposter. There can't be two Spider-Men. Let's take them both in! Hold on a sec. We'll have a showdown to prove which of us is the real Spider-Man, and you can unmask the loser. That's fair enough, but no tricks. <laughs> Duplicated my web power. Let's see if you've got the spider strength to go with it. He's trying to get away. And I love that meme. <clears throat> yeah, no, yeah, it's a very famous meme, and so so many memes. From so that, many from memes. So that. many memes. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, is that uh, you know, if you don't know Spider-Man, he's supposed to be like a teenager, high school, maybe college, but not really any older than that. We have a grown man voicing Spidey here. I don't know. Uh, is that is that a good thing, or or should we have like a kid be doing this? I mean, wouldn't wouldn't be the first time. But it wouldn't be the first time. I think back then year. too they were always older. Even the kids were older. Yeah. So no one back then would have noticed. We're noticing, but in terms of like cinematography, animation, back then, even now, like if I showed it to any of my siblings, they'd have no idea that it's an adult. Sure, yeah. They just see it as Spider-Man. Yeah. And yeah. And that's all you have to ask for, yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I really think that this show has put some staples into Spider-Man. I mean, we do have the meme. We have the theme song. Spider-Man. Spider-Man does whatever a spider can. Spins a web any size. Catches seeds just like flies. Look out. Here comes the Spider-Man. We have all the classic tropes, like you said. So um, it definitely does stand the test of time. And I think it does still, uh, you know, s s need support in the Spider-Man lore. Absolutely, yeah. Um, however, weirder things were yet to come. Uh, like. One of the weirder things is that uh, there was a PBS kids show called The Electric Company, and they had these little tiny Spider-Man shorts, and they were live action. And what they made them look like, it was like a comic book, and Spider-Man didn't talk at all, they just had speech bubbles. And it basically just taught kids about whatever the lesson was in the segment. It's the uh, multiverse with Spider-Mime. There you go, Spider-Mime, yeah, I like that. <laughs> Spidey is visiting his friends at PS Eight and a Half, where Mrs. Eckhart's music class is about to perform. What's your request, Spidey? Oh, Jelly Belly. That's on page 49. <laughs> Good question, Spidey. Who is the prankster? The principal is the prankster. Where did I put the giraffe and the sneezing powder? <clears throat> Spider-Man! Do you, 
you... Well, uh, please, no, please, you don't please understand. Don't no, no, I don't no, believe no, it. I don't believe you it. You don't understand. It, did that seem necessary? Do you think that was a good idea? Maybe just to grab the attention of kids? Or do you think it was just unnecessary? I think, I think that it's not necessary or unnecessary specifically. I think that it's more of at that time, whether it was children or teenagers that were getting into Spider-Man in the early 60s, right? It was like 62? Yeah, 70s maybe we're dipping into 70s. Oh, we're yeah. dipping into 70s now. In, yeah. So if you think about it though, that's like 10 years of animation, maybe some comics coming out. So those people are growing a little bit older. So it's just something that if you watch something now and a SpongeBob thing pops sure. in, right? Sure. Anyone who watched SpongeBob as a kid or as a teenager or even as an adult because you had kids, you're automatically going to get like turned into it and you're going to go, oh, that's cute or oh, that's funny or it's going to start making you remember things Marvel related. Right. So I don't okay. think it's that it's like necessary or unnecessary, just something that grabs your attention even if it has nothing to do with the show. Yeah. It's a household name at that point. Yeah, so yeah they're exactly. Just like, oh, Spider-Man's in the show, <clears throat> but... Yeah, actually, the first uh, live-action appearance of Spider-Man. That's in true. The yeah. Company, but um, yeah, no, I mean, like kids knew Spider-Man. It's a kids' show. Like they're gonna, you know, they probably thought, hey, let's try a live-action Spider-Man. They'll love it. And you know, and you know what? Somebody must have thought this is gonna work even better because uh, in the '70s we got our first live-action Spider-Man series in the '70s Spider-Man series. Now, this song, I always love this song because it is like 70s funk. And I'm seeing uh, Angel's face right here. And she's like, what the heck is this thing? Uh, this, surprisingly, as you can tell, it probably didn't look like it lasted long. And it didn't. It lasted like a maybe whopping 13 episodes. Um, and basically, this is bas a Spider-Man series, you know, in live action form. Um, Gives you a little wink there. And I'll tell you something here. This guy here, Nicholas Hammond, this is not the first time we've seen him. Nicholas Hammond is actually Friedrich from The Sound of Music. He's the oldest boy. So go figure, he's now playing Spider-Man. Um, I don't know what to make of this series sometimes. I mean, it, it looks very cheap and campy. I mean, it's the 1970s, what do you expect? But, uh... Did we have any thoughts? Angel, we'll start with you. Do you have any thoughts on what the heck that was supposed to be? Those goggles. I can't. I know, right? <laughs> the goggles really threw me off. It doesn't even look like eyes. It yeah, doesn't. it just looks like They're goggles. Just straight up goggles. design wasn't the best. To be honest, I've seen a lot of movies from that era. Sure. Yeah, sure. So I feel like they could have done better, but I think at the time maybe they just didn't know what they were really going for there. Yeah. But also it kind of looks just from the clips that you showed cuz I haven't seen that. Yeah. Should I say thankfully? I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah. Already. I mean it's it's kind <laughs> of a piece of the history a piece if you of history. If you want. history. Yeah, that's for sure. I just think like Looking at what you showed me, there were 
clips from that opening, I presume it was an opening, that already seemed kind of confusing to the Spider-Man that I grew up with. Sure. Like, it looked like there was just extra characters, and I'm like, oh, who is that supposed to be in who I'm familiar with? Right. So I guess right now I'm already, I would already be a little confused, but that costume, man, I don't know. That's not kid-friendly. I'm <laughs> telling you. It's, it's the costume that is so weird, and then that theme song, you're just like, getting the funk and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, I love absolutely that. funky 70s. <laughs> Do you have any thoughts on this, Vince? Um, I mean, it was, I mean, the 70s, it was the era that everybody was trying to make a Spider-Man show, or not Spider-Man show, but everybody was trying to make rather a superhero show. Sure. Like they, were, they were trying to, you know, see what they could do to have a new, fresh show, but um, no, I mean, it's a, you know, it's, they tried. It's a good start for live action, really. Yeah, I mean, not you know. Not the true start, but full series, at least. And, and this is nothing new. I mean, we had 1950s Superman, uh, a 1950s Superman mm -hmm. show. We had the 60s with Adam West Batman. And then in the 70s as well, we had Wonder Woman. And those shows were doing fine. Exactly. So we have Spider-Man who, here who just looks weird. Yeah, it's every, every studio trying to do their own, like, studio, superhero yep. show. Yeah. I was going to say, especially, like, even now you'll see that people are always comparing DC and Marvel. And this is such an early Marvel studio production Yeah. that maybe at the time, because right now people, you know, people are always like, oh, Marvel's got it better, Marvel's got it better. But who says that back then? Like, maybe DC was just on top and oh, they're yeah. just trying to get Spider-Man to be up there. I agree completely, yeah. And, I mean, this is also the 70s, so we had the Incredible Hulk series, too. So, I mean, you know, I guess, I don't know, I guess Marvel was just trying to creep up there. I don't know what they were trying to do, but... Wall, wall crawl up there? Wall crawl up there. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to check out the uh, 70s Spider-Man, go for it. It's not what you think. It's, it's going to be a little different. But uh, funky music, funky music, that's the best part. Also in the 70s, we had another live-action Spider-Man show. Now, if you thought the American Spider-Man 70s show was weird, well, hello, Japan. We have Japanese Spider-Man. Okay, so... Uh, you thought, the, you thought, like I said, the American one was weird. Oh boy, are you in for something here. So, forget everything you know about Spider-Man. The, the, the spider bite, getting spider powers, all that stuff. No, 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 no. Spider-Man is like a alien god sent down and ch has chosen this man to become the great protector called Spider-Man. And Spider-Man has this giant Transformer Power Rangers esque thing that giant, he travels. Giant around. Spider Mech, yeah. Yeah, that he travels around in. Um, this is the intro we're watching here. Uh, anybody else confused? Um, not not confused. I mean, I've I've seen um, a few episodes <coughs> before. I think Excuse they me. put a bunch of them on like Marvel's website at one point. Okay. Um, but no, it's it's definitely different. 
It's uh, like you were saying, it's like a god that comes down and like a, it's like he gets his spider powers through like a like a bracelet, like the like the bracelet. Like, oh yeah, the bracelet. Yeah, yeah, like the bracelet like stabs him kind of, and like that's how he gets injected with like the Spider-Man powers, and um, you know. It had all like the you know Japanese like common rider like kind of Sentai kind of you know tropes where it's like you know he has to be a cool motorcycle rider of course, guy yeah. you know. Well, that was definitely a transformer. I know. Yeah. <laughs> like, definitely transformer, Absolutely. which is very Japan. But you know what? It also reminded me of um, Power Rangers. Yeah. It really yeah. was very Power. Ranger very Power Rangers, Rangers. Yes. Which I kind of liked. I liked because that's why I like Tom Holland is because. Not the Power Rangers, but the fact that he was actually doing like martial arts, and that's what oh, I would okay, expect yep. Spider Man to do. Sure. I yeah, feel you, like that's. You think he, he would know some kind of. Just form something. Of fighting. Sure, yeah. yeah. So, and, you know, push in the Transformers, and you got a spider looking at. You got whatever that was. <laughs> yeah, whatever that you're actually, is. I mean, whatever that you're, you're not wrong. It's actually the same vein as Power Rangers, so yeah. that's, yeah. that's actually where that all comes from. Especially so. like the, the bracelet and everything, yep. that's very Power sure, yeah. I don't know which one came first, though. Uh, I think probably this, this Power one, or maybe I don't maybe know. Maybe this one came barely. I don't know, I don't know but I don't know They're when they started. They're probably gonna be around it. the same yeah. area. Yeah, yeah. It, it was like the seventies when they started doing all the yeah. Sentai stuff. Yeah, I'm just like I I don't know what that was, <laughs> and and I can see the expressions in our booth there. He's like, what the heck is this? And <laughs> foreign, <laughs> foreign, yeah, foreign. That's all I need to know. If you really want to watch uh, Japanese Spider-Man, go for it. Um, this could be your next live action anime. I don't know. Go for it. Uh, and I just got to say, you'll love the way that his suit, uh, you know, he puts his suit. Oh, on. yeah. It kind of just like floats in the screen and then magically he's got the suit. On. <laughs> Dang. But did it's, you see his hilarious. eyes? And yeah, how they the work? eyes, yeah. It's like <laughs> they're pretty good compared to what oh, we yeah. compared to goggles yes. boy there. They got the glasses or you know the you know the lenses. Yeah, I liked it. Moving on. Yeah. Um so uh th that was the 70s. 70s was a weird time for Spider-Man. But uh, in the 1980s, somebody kind of had some sense knocked into them and said, let's go back to animation. Thus, we got the 1980s Spider-Man TV show. Okay, so this is kind of like a season one, sort of, because the next show we're going to talk about kind of spun off of this. And you'll see because it's a very similar intro. Not much to say about this series. Um, you know, you have some more familiar characters here. Peter looks way too old. Um, <laughs> And we have some familiar villains popping up here as well. Some more of the Marvel canon ones. Exactly. Doctor Doom there. Yeah. Um, uh, there, there's not much to say. Uh, do you think that... Um, I will say this, though. Spider-Man Spider has had a lot of different television series. And do you think maybe that uh, he's had maybe one too many? Do you think like this one seems unnecessary? I don't think it's unnecessary. I feel like this just kind of feels like a continuation of the 60s show, but okay. they definitely tried to be more serious than like, you know, silly and campy. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely recognize this more. And I feel like that, I feel like even though it's not, like again, I don't know, necessary, unnecessary, he does look a little older, mm -hmm. but at least I'm happy with recognizing those characters, like you said. Sure. Being Can, able to, oh, though, that's who's going to be in the next one. And the that's next who's one, that, yeah. Exactly. Even some of like, the less important ones that you can mm -hmm. easily recognize, like MJ or, yeah. like, um, you know, J. Jonah Jameson. Yeah, thank you. J. J. Jonah Jameson. <laughs> Triple J. Yeah. J. J. Yeah. Triple J. 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 Um, yeah, no, I, there's, there's just not really much to say with this one. It was just like a, it, it was a, it was a, Standard. This was standard, it's yeah. Good. It works. And it was a diving board for what came after it, which was um, Spider-Man here, he's like fighting all these villains by himself. Uh, let's give him some help. Let's give him Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Okay, so 
Uh, first of all, you can see that Spider-Man has become so popular that he's basically the emblem of Marvel Comics here. And you'll see here that it's a very, very similar intro. Love the, uh, the phasing kind of. Yeah, phasing's kind of cool, kinda actually. There. But I mean, look at this. It's the same title as in we just saw it. So they just added Amazing Friends there. A kind of laser effects and everything added to it. Yeah. And his Amazing Friends here are Iceman and Firestar. I uh, don't really know too much about them, but okay. I would have maybe put him with maybe with Hulk or maybe like someone else more popular. Hulk's but right there on the on the poster. Hulk too. is right there. Um, kind of a better theme song, also I might add here. Uh, but uh, what do we think? Do we think that Spider-Man needed um, partners, or do you think that he could just stay by himself? Um, I mean, he probably could have done just as well if they just continued it with like by himself, but. Does he need partners? Maybe not, but they need to sell more more toys. They need to make more money. Got to get more of that Saturday oh, okay. morning cartoon money. Okay, Joel Schumacher. <laughs> oh, no. I, I think that it would have been better if they were cameos. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then if they brought in Hulk for like an episode or two episodes, or if they wanted to have it be more team-like, you know, sure. before our beloved Avengers came out. Kind of like the, the 90s series day where they had yeah. like heroes come in every once in a while. And I I feel like with that, and then that could have been a great way of like making making notes to oh, there's a group of heroes. More fire, more destruction. This is gonna be harder than knocking out some tin robots. Thanks, Spidey. That gives me an idea. Spider friends, go for it! You know, because then obviously they and produce then have like the, the team up show later. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, other they do it later on. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, they do. Um, the, the really cool thing is is that uh, we had um, like the intros of each episode done by one the one and only Stan Lee. So that's kind of cool. That's pretty cool. I didn't know that actually. Yeah, and this is kind of like the start of his many cameos in the Spider-Man TV shows. Um, but yeah, no, uh, it, it's, it's a weird show. I don't know if I would necessarily check it out. I mean, I like Stan Lee and all that, but it's like, yeah, I don't know. Um, but I like the idea of it, it should have been like a season finale, you know, all the heroes come together yeah. and stuff like that. Something just to kind of lead it up to what ends up happening later in the series anyways. It sure. might have been too much for now, but it's already happened, so. You're a Spider-Man completionist, you know, check yeah. it out. Yeah. And, and none of these shows actually lasted super duper long, and I kind of feel bad for Spider-Man because he just keeps going and going until he gets a good one. And the next series was the one where he really struck gold. His longest running series from the 90s, Spider-Man the Animated Series. All right, we're all jamming out to this theme song. I love this theme song. Um, so yes, yeah, Spider-Man the Animated Series. Peter still looks too old. My gosh, come on, guys. Um, you know, pretty continuously looks like, uh, like not too old, but like someone in like college. Yeah, college is fine. Maybe like even the later years of college. Masters. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. Barely out of college. Um, okay, so this show was huge. It was on, I believe, Fox Kids, and uh, it basically it it, it threw out all the stops. Uh, it it uh, pulled out all the stops. They had multiple villains. They had story arcs. They had like chapters for each each episode. They had they used CGI in some chase scenes for uh, around New York. Um, they had a, a kickin' theme song done by one of the members of Aerosmith. Um, 
this show pulled everything out and it lasted, like I said, a whopping five seasons. Say quite a while, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So that's pretty good. Um, this also, and, and Stanley also came in playing himself, which is kind of cool. I don't believe what you're telling me. In your reality, I'm a character in fiction? Yep, and I'm an actor who plays you on TV. But there's someone here I knew you had to meet. He's the man who created you for fans all over the world. Spider-Man? Uh, Pam, hold my calls for a while. I, I think I've finally gone crazy. Oh, man! Wow! You know, Spidey, I've always wanted to experience real web-slinging. And I've always wanted to be appreciated as a real hero. It seems you've made me into one. Thanks. Hey, don't mention it. And then this also kicked off... Um, Ed Asner's time at, in Spider-Man. Ed Asner, of course, Lou Grant from Mary Tyler Moore. You know what? You got spunk. <laughs> well, yeah. I hate spunk. <laughs> he, play, he has played like three different characters throughout Spider-Man, and this is his first time he plays J. Jonah Jameson. So like that's, that's the voice I think of when I think of J. Jonah. Like that'll, you know, that'll always be the standard voice, honestly. Yeah. Of who we think of. Well, I mean, I always think of someone else, but we'll, but we'll get to him. Again. Jonah, check the main feed. Oh, <laughs> what have I done? You? What do you mean? Robbie, I helped create that thing. You what? Why would you do such a thing? I did it for Julia, my wife. Years ago, a crime boss warned me to back off a story, but I refused. And one night, a man came after me. A man in a mask. He aimed at me, but he hit her. Now I've sworn to keep this city safe from people who hide behind masks and think that they're above the law. That's exactly what your creation is doing. You've got to stop them. You're right, Robbie. I've made a horrible mistake. So, uh, Angel, we'll start with you. Uh, you might have seen a couple episodes of this show. I I recognize that artwork, especially MJ's hair. Yeah, like that is very iconic. I definitely, which is a good thing. Oh yeah, that I is remember a good thing. Yeah. it. But I was like born at the end of the '90s, so it's not like I grew up with it. You Same know? here. Yeah. Yeah. Same. All of us. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's it like some it says something that I'm I'm able to recognize almost all of those characters in that intro. I mean, even in, but yeah, we saw. I mean, as, as you can see. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Isn't that the Spider-Man shirt? Yeah, the '90s shirt. Yep. But um, no, but even in like reruns on TV or like through like VHS, DVD, whatever, like we all ended up watching this one right here. It was probably like our, I mean, I don't know if that was your starting point, but between like that and the, yeah. the Tobey Maguire movie, it's probably that was the starting point. Mm -hmm. I love Tobey. Um, I love Tobey. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree. And I mean, it was... I was impressed of how long it lasted. And I mean, having these different story arcs, I think they sometimes went a little overboard. Like they had like... They kind of did a Spider-Verse thing at one point, and it seemed a little yeah. awkward. That was with all the, the <clears throat> Madam Web stuff. Yeah, the yeah. Madam Web, yeah. Perfect. My dear boy, what? Whoever said that everything was supposed to be perfect? Who said that? I did. Who's there? Who are you? Isn't the real question, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> What's this? Some phony fortune teller? Phony? What? Ha! You are the phony. How did you know what I was thinking? I know much more than your trivial thoughts, Spider-Man. I'm not Spider-Man. You are a terrible liar. Please, don't waste my time. <laughs> my costume, how'd it get on me? Good going, Spidey. You walked right into a trap. You are wrong, Mr. Parker. As usual. How do you know who I am? And how do you know so much about me? I want some answers. You will get them. Now, sit down. I'll stand, thanks. It is usually a good idea to have a seat when your world is about to be turned upside down. Whoa! Huh? You are about to embark on a period of training for a mission I will soon require of you. The only thing I'm embarking on is a trip out of here. Parker! This is one situation you cannot crawl away from. In order to succeed in this mission, you must first overcome the self-pity that threatens to end your career. But, I don't know, uh, I think it did work really, really well. And again, that kick and theme song, I mean, come on. The guitar is so awesome.
Uh, but yeah, no, I, I definitely think every, everybody should check out this Spider-Man series, and it is definitely worth it, and it's a good one. So definitely check that one out. Um, one that kind of kind like branched off of it was uh, one in the late 90s, early 2000s, that kind of seems weird. This is, we're getting into weird territory again. It's called Spider-Man Unlimited. So Spider-Man Unlimited, uh, basically, it takes Spider-Man and throws him, I don't know, what is it, into the future? It's 2099. 2099? Something like that. It's kind of a 2099 character, but I don't think completely. But it's just like, it's, it's a little weird, and uh, uh, he, he has like a web cape. Oh, interesting. And like we have total redesigns of classic characters. Like I think we're going to get a glimpse of the Green Goblin maybe. I don't know. He has like bat wings. I don't know why. Um, there he does, is kind of fighting there he is, yeah. the aliens and stuff, yeah. Uh, what are our thoughts on this? Does this look confusing? Does this not look like Spider-Man to you? I don't know. I mean, I, I would watch this one right at, right alongside the 90, or the other 90 series, and I always liked it. I thought it was like a, I mean, it's different, but it was a nice continuation with the, uh, you yeah, know, the I think earlier it's very, series. I think it's very sci-fi based, <clears throat> yeah. and I feel like having them almost side by side, like yeah. you said, one is going to be a little bit more realistic superhero, yeah. Yeah. and then yeah. one being sci-fi. Traditional, yeah. 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 Traditional superhero versus more something that's a little bit more scientific is going to kind of just touch on both audiences. Sure. Especially if your parents were, you know, a little bit more in the... And look who everybody blames. Meanwhile, John Jameson's alone in a spaceship with two of the meanest psychos this side of Vlad the Impaler. Just remember to support your local web slinger. Hold it right there, murderer. You're not going anyplace. For all we know, this fire is your doing. You're blaming me? After all the times I've risked my life for this stinking city, this is the thanks I get? Geeky versus superhero. Geeky, like, yeah. There's nothing you... wrong with that. Oh, no, nothing As at we all speak. No. If you were a little like more geeky, though, mm -hmm. I think your parents would have appreciated something that kind of, you know that your parents sat there watching all these cartoons. Of course, yes. my, I know for a fact my dad did. Oh, absolutely. 100%. And, and if for some reason they just weren't into Spider-Man as a whole, at least this is something that touches into an aspect of another audience. Of course, yeah. 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 All new, all improved Spider-Man. This year's fully loaded model features nanotechnology, discreetly borrowed from the lab of Reed Richards. This scientific marvel features billions of microscopic robots working in harmony to make one spiffy set of duds, complete with optional anti-symbiote device. Man, that was close. If Jameson knew Peter Parker and Spider-Man are both on Counter-Earth... Oh, they thought I was crazy building a remote-controlled Spidey suit. No. It, it just seems a little weird to me. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I think I would like more traditional Spider-Man, you know. Mm. This is one of those heroes who's actually in, like, a real city. He's, in, he's based in New York City, so that's kind of cool. Um, not like Metropolis or Gotham or anything like that. Um, I mean, but, I, yeah. I feel like the 90s series was, like, they're, you know, they were already edgy as is, so, like, they had to, like, what can we do to make this even edgier, up the ante a little bit? And let's like, throw them into the let's future. Let's throw them 100 years into the future and have them fight, like, alien versions of everyone. Because that works. His suit does remind me of modern technology A little bit, yeah. Things, yeah. You know, like yeah. what Tony does. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, to exactly. the recent ones. It, it's, except, like, the cape. But when he was doing kind all those flips capes and stuff, you kind of... Capes are cool. No capes. No, no capes. capes. <laughs> Well, that's, um, you know, no no airplanes in the area, but for now. Exactly, we're yeah. safe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, 
Anyway, um, yeah, no, if you want to check out uh, Spider-Man Unlimited, go for it. It is interesting. It is different. But again, different can be good sometimes. So, uh, yeah, give it a check out. Um, all this time, all throughout these decades, we've been trying to get a Spider-Man movie off the ground. The goggles there uh, had a couple TV movies, and then there was actually one being developed by Canon, which was going to happen, but it never did. Um, but... Finally, in 2002, we got our first big on-screen Spider-Man movie. There he is. There's our good friend, Moby Teguire. I mean, Toby Maguire. He's going to uh, put some dirt in your eye. He's going to put some dirt. <laughs> Aw, little Gobby going to cry? Anyway, um, we'll get to that movie. Uh, so yes, the 2002 Spider-Man movie. Oh my gosh, is it good. It is so much fun. Uh, like we said, it stars Tobey Maguire, Kirsten Dunst as Mary Jane Watson, and Willem Dafoe as one heck of a Green Goblin, uh, as, along with Harry, uh, Harry Osborn being played by uh, James Franco. Um, we've all seen this movie more than twice. Um, Angel, we'll start with you. How good is this movie? Honestly, I remember... I remember... I don't remember how many times I watched it, but it was enough to where I remember so much of this movie that I could probably recite it at this point. Oh, I like don't that. Don't quiz me on same, that. Same, <laughs> but I mean, exactly. I won't, but same here, yeah. It's, I loved, um, I, I loved everything about it, especially, oh, there it There's is. There's the it, iconic kiss. It's the iconic kiss. I loved, I loved the, um, the origin that they gave him, and I will stick through it. If you get bit by the spider and your whole everything changes, why can't he just QQ by himself? Thank you. It's just, it just wouldn't make sense. Some I'm people, like, like today, they give that crap kind of thing because it's not traditional like web shooters. But web like, shooters, I, yeah. I always loved that. It was I like, think it, it was more makes organic. Sense. It yeah. makes so I much more that. sense. Like, oh my god, I love that. I love the costumes. I love I love MJ. I think that they did perfect casting Absolutely, there. Yeah. And he is a little bit older, but then obviously yes, they not, continue yeah. through. So it's still believable. Still believable, and you grow with him. He, he, he gives a good cry, too. So, that, you know, he does. Thank, thanks, Toby. Great, great cry. Uh, now, Vince, I know you're, 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 you're a bit of a horror nut. Just a little bit. Oh, I, I was getting there, and you, but, yeah, the connection. Uh, the director of this and the other two films in this franchise are done by one Mr. Sam Raimi. What do you think about Sam Raimi going from your one of your favorite franchises, The Evil Dead, to superheroes and Spider-Man? Um, yeah, no, like I think he was a perfect perfect director for it. I mean, you can definitely tell uh, you know his horror roots kind of show even with the web shooter or you know not the web shooter having the organic thing like that's his like kind of transforming into a monster thing. Like they kind of he kind of goes through that with like uh, like scared of what's happening to him and everything. Sure. Um, but no, he he. I'm trying to remember if Darkman was before. Yeah, I think Darkman was before. So he's done. He's touched um, superheroes a little bit before, and yeah, no, he was a perfect, uh, perfect director to bring this to the screen. I think honestly. Yeah, we got. Uh, we actually have Toby here joining us in, in pop figure little, form. Little Toby. And then we have um, a wonderful uh, 20th anniversary uh, vinyl album here, which is really, really well done. I gotta show you this. It is super cool, uh, and it's a gold record actually, which is pretty awesome. So very cool stuff. Yeah, no. Uh, it is a great movie. I love it, love it, love it. Willem Dafoe is a great Green Goblin. He was born to play that role, I think.
Yeah, no, I love, um, one thing I always thought is I love the costume they chose. It's kind of like we were saying earlier, it's kind of got like the Power Rangers kind of like, uh, bit, like yeah. he's, he's in a suit kind of thing. It's not just like, a, like you know, they put some face paint on him and he's like a, a goblin. It's, Definitely it was, it was yeah, I love the mecha look of it. Yeah, and uh, and, and J.K. Simmons is J. Jonah Jameson. Oh, oh my, my gosh. God, always. <laughs> Spider-Man. Green Goblin, you like that? Mr. Jameson. Made it up myself. These weirdos all gotta have a name now. Mr. Jameson, Spider-Man. Hoffman? Yeah? Call the patent office, copyright the name Green Goblin. I want a quarter every time somebody says it. How about Green Meanie? Spider-Man wasn't attacking the city. He was trying to save it. That's slander. It is not. I resent that. Slander is spoken. In print, it's libel. Set him down, tough guy. Speak to the devil! Spider-Man! I knew you two were in this together! I knew hey, kiddo, mm -hmm. let mom and dad talk for a minute, will you? Yes. I think also this movie did a really good job at really messing with us like psychologically okay and as all of us were so young in this room mm -hmm. we were at a very young age and i feel like watching even just how how the goblin became it was it was multi-personality disorder oh, yeah. you know yeah. oh and, yeah he was he was menacing yeah. he was scary in this movie oh big time but i think it's so unique and important because as a kid i didn't know what the freaking that was but as an like as an adult i'm like oh wow i'm like you really got to see this man become just like from a regular doctor Messing, uh, messing up his own experiment and then destroying his brain, basically. Yeah, you, you, can't, you can't do this to me. You can't do this. You know how hard I've worked. And I, he, and I think he loved that role. I think he, oh. I think he loved it. He oh, just, he went, he went all, he all in. He just went all in on it. Where are you? Follow the cold shiver running down your spine. I don't understand. Did you think it was coincidence? So many good things all happening for you, all for you, Norman. What do you want? To say what you won't, to do what you can't, to remove those in your way. The board members. You killed them. We killed them. We? Remember your little accident in the laboratory? Performance enhancers. Bingo. Me. Your greatest creation. Bringing you what you've always wanted. Power beyond your wildest dreams, and it's only the beginning. There's only one who can stop us. Or imagine if he joined us. <laughs> um, but like you were saying though, with the, it's kind of being a little scary to us as kids, that's, that's uh, Raimi right there. That's yeah. him letting some of the horror shine through and it, it works yeah. to bring tension, yeah. And uh, wonderful music done by Danny Elfman. Yeah, another one of my favorite Another people. one of your favorites. Um, and uh, yeah, no, um, just excellent, excellent movie. Really, really love it. Uh, um, and you know, you were talking. We were talking about memes. A thousand and two memes came from this movie. Oh, absolutely. Half of them from Toby himself, but also like, I'm somewhat of a scientist myself. Harry tells me you're quite the science whiz. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. The, the boardroom one, that's the other one. The boardroom one. Yep. one um, pizza time. P pizza time. <laughs> pizza time. That, that's the next one. Um, that's a nice, that's a cute outfit. Your husband make it for you? And so on and so forth. What are you doing up there? Staying away from you. That's a cute outfit. Did your husband give it to you? Randy Savage. Oh yeah, with them shoehorning in Randy Savage. Absolutely. That's, oh yeah. 
So the Spider-Man movie was a big success and um, everybody loved it and so people immediately were starting to cash in on it. One of the weirdest things to cash in on it was MTV. Yes, MTV, which at this point was not showing many music videos, but they were showing Spider-Man, the new animated series. Okay, so this is basically a continuation of the 2002 Tobey Maguire movie. We have, it only lasted like I think maybe 12 episodes. We have some redesigns of the characters, but I can tell you it's the same Spider-Man because um, he's uh, growing older, he's in college now, and he still has the organic webs. Um, interesting uh, voice acting here. We have um, Ian Ziering as Harry Osborn, uh, Lisa Loeb as MJ, and my personal favorite voice actor for Spider-Man, Neil Patrick Harris. I didn't even realize that was him. That was Neil Patrick Harris. Um, also, is it is a CGI Spider-Man, so it's a little weird. Very video game. Yeah, very that, video gamey. Yeah, I like this show. Like, I love the continuation of it uh, being part of like the, the movie series. <clears throat> like, I, I'm with you. I like. Uh, yeah. I don't know if he's my favorite, but I like Neil Patrick Harris as Spider-Man. He did really, really well. Um, Gosh, didn't realize you two were an item. Does People Magazine know? I could say. Nice of you to drop by. Not a problem. Will I be fighting any of your henchmen, or did you already eat them? <laughs> Let's show him what he's made of. Didn't your mother tell you never to play with guns? Not very fair. A human spider against an unarmed man. Yeah, but each of your arms is the size of Brooklyn. Whoa. Hey, Scaly. Know where I can get a little tail? <laughs> Get out of here! Why are you helping me? Go on, go! But yeah, no, the, the it's you can still definitely tell it's early CGI. It's a little little weird. It's still the same feel as like the um, some of the other Marvel shows did that too. Like I know the, yeah. the Iron Man show looked yes. a little bit like that too. The Armored Adventures, but it, it you know they were they were starting out with CGI. Yeah, and, and, and any thoughts or? I wanted to say, I was like, it just reminded me of those video games. But I think it's important, too, that it was almost, like, in between the two movies. I feel like that's something, I shouldn't say two, but, you know, in between the first and the second. Sure, yeah. Um, because it's something that kind of gives fans something to look forward to instead of waiting. Yeah. Especially back then when movies took forever. Yeah. So, I, I get that exactly. And, I mean, you know, it's, it's a little different, but I still like it. Stanley doesn't make another cameo. Um... We have uh, Ed Asner back. He's playing a cop this time. Um, don't take too much credit, Spider-Man. We don't need vigilantes in this city. This all seems like a deja vu. You got something to say, wise guy? Hey, if you could hold off on the Spidey bashing for a second. When was the last time Craven was spotted in New York? It's burning into my brain. You two chumps trashed Midtown way back when. How about Teradex? Been in jail since you put him there six months ago. And Silver Sable? You saw her take a permanent swim in the river. What's with the dumb questions? Nothing. Thanks, Officer Barr. You've been a big help. And I like the music in it, too, which is very techno and very stuff like that. So uh, if you want to get a chance to look up this series, it's very short. It's a little bit mature still because it's on MTV, so we can be edgy. Um... <laughs> But, uh, yeah, check it out. Spider-Man, the new animated series. It's a good one. It's a keeper. Especially for Neil Patrick Harris. It, he does a great job. Hands in the air! Hello? Good guy? Saved your butt? On the ground, now! My life is complicated. There's a party tonight at the Sigmas. Want to come? How about if I come late? He's not coming. Why not just go to a party like everyone else? Just because I'm not like everyone else? 
spandex? Ha! You might want to rethink that. This is so not spandex! Thanks for letting me do that. Not a problem. Two thousand four comes around, and we say, "Okay, we want to make a sequel to our big shot movie." So, thus, we get Spider Man Two. Spider Man Two, yes, uh, debatably one of the best superhero movies ever. Um, this time, we have uh, Harry Osborn still mad at Peter because he blames Peter and Spider Man for the death of his father, the Green Goblin. And this time, Spider Man is going up against Doctor Octopus, played by Alfred Molina. Um, what do we think of Spider-Man 2? Is it all it's hyped up to be, or is it just like another great Superman, uh, superhero uh, sequel? I think this was a good sequel. I think that they really, I think they did really good at keeping with the lore of Spider-Man. Sure. Even though there are some things different, like you know, our organic webs, which does get rid of him having to, oh no, I ran out. Right? Yeah, he doesn't exactly. run out. He doesn't have to make his own webs and stuff. But I think that, I think it was good, and I think it really shows, like, again with the psychology, like, you're not dealing with Dr. Osborne himself, but the fact that his son is still sitting there, like, now his son's getting messed up. Yeah. And he's even dealing with the struggle of just being a hero right Of just being well. a hero, yeah. He yeah. quits for a while. He quits, because he loses his power. And then on top of that, though, I mean, he loses his love. Yeah. <laughs> and that is so important, and that's so real. Power oh my gosh, he loses his friend, he loses his love. Hand. He loses his, like, teacher. Oh, yeah. This and whole movie is so sad. And right there, when Dr. Octopus is being uh, operated on, there's some of your horror stuff coming in again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, horrifying. But, um, yeah, no, I think this was a good continuation. Like, it, you know, introducing more villains. Like, there are even uh, earlier in the trailer, we saw um, Dr. Connors. Nothing really yeah. ever, ever came of that with him becoming the lizard. But they were, you know, they were planting seeds for, like, you know, the future of the franchise. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, this is one of the few times where we uh, get MJ to say, go get him, Tiger. I love that. Um, yeah, no, uh, Spider-Man 2, as we see the trailer here, uh, there's, there's a lot of good stuff in it. Um, I think they may have taken the path of, like, let's make it a little bit darker than our first one. Uh, yeah, definitely, with all the with psychological all... stuff you were saying. Exactly. Um, also, with these movies, um, at the end of each one, we have Spider-Man swinging against an American flag. And that's because the first one came out uh, the year after 9-11. Mm. So do we think that uh, Spider-Man here is supposed to be like America's next hero? Like, you know, Superman standing for truth, justice in the American way? Or what are we trying to do here? Mm. I could see that. Yeah, I could see that, definitely. but then obviously we, wouldn't, we know what happens after the next movie, so. True, <laughs> yeah, true. Definitely, it's someone that, like, you know, in that version of New York, they look up to. So, I mean, and like, we're in New York, of course. And then, yeah. same in the real world here, after, like, you know, something, you know, 9 11 happened, something terrible, like, you know, it's something to look up to. You need a hero, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, no, uh, Spider Man 2 is a good movie. Uh, really, really well done with a great villain with, with Alfred Molina. the sun in the palm of my hand.
a knack for that. Not anymore. Bruce Campbell. Great, great, great yes, villain. Yes, and all the Bruce Campbell cameos, yes, because we are in a Sam Raimi movie. Uh, yes. So, yes, Kyle Cam- Bruce. Cameos of both Bruce Campbell and then uh, the Delta shows up too. Or in the first one, Uncle Ben's car is the, uh, the Delta from Evil Dead. Dollars will be paid to the terrifying, the deadly, the amazing Spider-Man. I have to see this show. You just let me in, I'll stand in the... Thank you. Oh, Charles. It's like you're obsessed with Evil Dead or something. Maybe. I don't That's know. so weird. When are we going to do or Evil... I just know a lot of facts. When are we going to do Evil Dead on the show? I'll be at any time. Yeah. Any time. <laughs> Gag me and throw me in the corner. That's when you can do it. <laughs> oh, no. No! Ah! Why is this happening to me? So this was a this was another big success. So they knew they had to do another one. Uh, however, it's not what people expected. This is in the form of Spider-Man Three. So Spider-Man Three comes out. Um, everyone's back, all the cast and stuff like that. We have some new villains. We have uh, Sandman, played by Thomas Hayden Church, does a great job. And then we also have Venom, played by. So for Grace. Hey, Peter. Hey, Peter. <laughs> Very good. Um, we also have uh, Peter and MJ, excuse me, getting closer. Uh, they're going to get engaged, maybe. And we also have the famous uh, arc of Spider-Man getting the black suit and uh, twisted and all that stuff. Being, a, you know, not really evil, just like they kind of just, kind of just made him a jerk. Uh, the term is emo. 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 Yeah, yeah, absolutely emo. Um, as we see the trailer here, uh, what do we think of Spider-Man 3? Is it really that bad, or is it actually a good finale to the trilogy? It's not, it's not bad at all. Um, it's definitely, it's a little rushed, like, or not rushed, but I mean, I know they're like, with this one, there was some studio intervention where like... Oh, was there? They were, um, yeah, it's just a case of like, they wanted to cram in as much as they, you know, they could all at once. Like, I don't think the originally, I think Sam Raimi even wanted to do, um, do Venom or the Black Suit. I think it was just, he wanted to focus just on, uh, Sandman, I believe. Oh, okay. I would have, I would have actually liked that better. I think. I would have liked that. I was gonna say it's so cluttered that they could have made this two, three more movies. Oh, plus you have the, uh, you have three villains. You have the um, um, Harry coming in as a second Green Goblin. Too. Oh yeah, that's yeah, right. right. Yeah, right yeah, yeah, yeah. There yep. he is. There he is. It really, it does definitely rush it, but I think it just puts too much, too much character development within what like two hours yeah like it's just too much even for us to process what's really happening like i think you can do you could have comfortably had sandman and and you know second green goblin that's i think that fits but i feel like i don't just you know venom's like the alien from another planet like i feel like that's that's so big that like you could you could have a whole movie with just venom i feel like yeah you need a separate movie just for him uh we also got an introduction of uh, gwen stacy in this uh played by bryce dallas howard so that's kind of cool other um, other things that you know may, might have come in the future if it had continued, but yeah, I feel like just a lot was shoehorned into this movie, and mm-hmm. it feels cluttered and crowded and stuff like that. Um, to say if it was a good finale, though, I don't know. Uh... <clears throat> if, if that's all we ever get, it's an okay finale. It's still good. It's a good movie still, but like. Yeah, they'll love 
it. Pete's getting a shot of this. You know, I guess one person can make a difference. Enough said. You know, well, we're getting there in a little bit, but like Marvel, like in the future, you know, we could definitely use a fourth movie. Gee, I wonder just what would happen if Peter were, if, if Toby were just yeah. to come back. Did I come wonder. Back? Yeah. I How wonder. It'd be, it'd be crazy. It's, it's yeah. so weird. Let's let's dwell on that. As you can see, there is so much Spider-Man out there. There's so many varieties. There's weird '70s versions, futuristic. There's crying Toby. There's British people playing American superheroes. Yeah, I'm calling them out. Sorry, Andrew and Tom. Um, and animation as well. So there's plenty of Spider-Man. Do yourself a favor, watch them all. You're gonna love it. You can clearly see that we all love it. And I can't thank you guys enough for coming on the show and talking about it. Thank you. It Anytime. has been so much fun to talk about it with you guys. And I think there's only one way we could end this show and that's to play Who Are You? Okay, so uh, Angelique, you've now come on the show for the first time. Yes. So here's what the sh here's what this game is about. I'm gonna play a clip, and you have to tell me who it is and or what it is from. And you can guess anybody you want, anything you anything you want. Let's roll a clip. I've taught Chef into doing something special. Starting Tuesday, it's gonna be movie night every night. But you might be interested in seeing how you enjoyed that western. We're going to be showing the three greatest horror movies ever made. Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, and Son of Frankenstein. You might even throw an Abbott and Costello in Frankenstein. I have no interest in horror movies. How do you know if you've never seen one? You don't have to see all of them. Just come the first night. I promise you'll like it. Reanimated life forms, science run amok. You're right up your alley. All right, so there is the clip. Uh, I've played it for you. Do you have any idea what that is or who that is? You know, my, my first guess was it's going to be a Doctor Who reference. Okay. And then as soon as it started going, I was like, that's not Doctor Who. I know way. But now I'm thinking it's like, 
it's just towards that ending that I want to say it's going to be in the Star Trek universe or okay. something similar. Okay. Because I feel like I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I could see him being like, oh, you don't know, like, something on Earth? Like, let's talk about that, you know? It's very obviously very scientific, and he's talking about little horror things. Okay. But I can't think of anything else unless... You want to pick a Star Trek series? You want to get more specific? You got, like, the original, Next Gen, Deep yeah. Space, Voyager, Enterprise? I want to say, okay, wait, I got, like, two, two guesses here. I'm going to say it's either going to be in the Star Trek universe... Okay. And it's going to be towards Enterprise-esque. Okay. Or it's James Bond. And I have no idea where. It's James Bond in space. Movies. That happened. In space? That happened. Did it really? Moonraker. It's Moonraker. Yeah. I would say it's definitely Moonraker. Oh my Moonraker. gosh, Moonraker. 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 <laughs> Vince, any, any quick guesses? <sighs> so, I mean, like, I've guessed it correctly in the past. Yeah. Uh, I, I know you and then my brain immediately goes to it's a James Bond reference or it's a Star Trek reference, but... Uh, yeah, you got you. This is one of those months where you got me. Uh, I'm mean, I'm not too sure where who it is actually. It is. I've been I was been trying to think of exactly who the voices are, but I'm not sure honestly. Well, okay, fair enough. Uh, so so you don't have a guess, but you're guessing either it's either James Bond or someone in Star Trek. James Bond or Star Trek Enterprise. Enterprise. Okay, and I'll be silly and say it's uh, it's Mystery Science Theater, and that's uh, that's Mike, and that's uh, Gypsy talking. Together. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've had so much fun talking about Spider-Man. Again, check out them all. You're going to love them all. There is so much cool stuff. Thank you to you guys for coming. Thank you to our Magic and Tech team. My name is Daniel Saletti. This has been As The Real Turns. That is a wrap. <laughs>